Hello SICW wrestling fans, happy Halloween. Welcome here to the SICW studio for our Sunday night update coming off a great Saturday night at the Belclair Fairgrounds. Herb, the Halloween spooktacular lived up to its name. You know, it, it, there was such a buzz inside of that Belclair Fairgrounds like I've never heard before. And we've been running in there for many, 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 many years with the SICW wrestling and it was just electrifying uh, start to finish and not just the uh, great matches that took place but the trunk or treat the costume contest everything that we've been talking about for the last three four months lived up to the expectations the with the legends everything it was just great people were excited it was a, a buzz like i have not heard like i said a uh, very successful uh, night uh, and here we are uh, halloween uh, I got to tell you, I'm exhausted. Oh, it, it's been a long weekend, uh, a long day. It's going to be another long night. Um, but tonight we're also going to have some breaking news, something you've got to stay tuned till the end of this episode to hear just what other uh, trick is up the Herb Simmons sleeve because five matches in October, it's been a long month, Herb, but it just you never cease to amaze me that – Yet again, you have another cat coming out of the hat. Well, it's, you know, and I got to give credit where credit's due. Whether you like him or not, a guy like Travis Cook knows how to push my buttons. So I think if we stay tuned tonight after this episode, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll show you what we're talking about. Absolutely. So, folks, without further ado, let's take a look at this week's episode of SICW All-Star Wrestling. Hello wrestling fans, welcome to SICW All-Star Wrestling. I'm Drew Abenhouse, here with Herb Simmons. Herb, we've got another banger. These episodes have been tremendous. We've got another one today. We've got a brand new team of Outlaw Country that will be in action today. Our brand new SICW Tag Team Champions of Jason Breed and Flash Flanagan will see action today. And we're going to see the debut of Niles Plonkay here on All-Star Wrestling as he takes on superstar Steve Fender. Well, it's an all-star lineup right here, and each and every week the episodes are just getting bigger and better. Thanks to each and every one of you fans out there who tune in, and, and we can't thank you enough. Yes, sir. Niles Plonkay and superstar Steve, these are two world-class athletes, and I think fans are really going to appreciate and like Niles Plonkay. Very much. I mean, I've seen him before. Like I said, he's here in SICW now. He's been all over making a name for himself. But right now, he's in SICW. Absolutely right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, before we go up to ringside, let's head to the podium to catch a few words with the new tag team, Outlaw Country. Ladies and gentlemen, I am here with a brand new tag team to hit the ranks at SICW. It is the team of Outlaw Country. It is the Big Texan and Tyler Bodine. Tex, you've been talking for weeks and months of bringing in backup. You've done so now. Holy cow, what do you say? Well, you know what, <clears throat> Dr. Drew? I just had to go home. I had to go home and uh, get a big badass. And that's what Tyler is, a big, mean badass. So he's going to actually... Work with me, someone who I can actually tag with and know that he's got my back. Yeah. Well, Tyler, you're a big son of a gun. Welcome, of course, to SICW. What are your thoughts? What can we expect from someone 300 pounds like yourself? Well, just like the big Texan said, I am a big badass. And you know what? Texans got to stick together. He called me for backup. I'm here, and I've got his back. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Tyler Bodine and the Big Tex and the team of Outlaw Country. We're going to head up to ringside and see them in action right now. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, our opening matchup on today's All-Star Wrestling is a tag team match set for one fall. Introducing first at a combined weight of 783 pounds. First, from Effingham, Illinois, Richard Shaw. Yeah. His tag team partner makes his way to us from the Sudan. He is the wild man, Beast. Their opponents at a combined weight of 578 pounds. First from Gun Barrel, Texas, the Big Texan. 
His tag team partner comes from his ranch in Laredo, Texas. He is Tyler Bodine. Together they are Outlaw Country. Ladies and gentlemen, our opening match up on today's All-Star Wrestling is underway. These are two big hosses right here. Tyler Bodine weighs in at about 300 pounds. So does Richard Shaw. These two hosses trading elbows and forearms to get started. Richard Shaw with the knee lift right to the gut. Well, Drew, when you look at all four of those men in that ring, why Why is there a question where the big boys come to work at? Holy cow, this is over a 1,000 pounds worth of meat in the ring here. The beast, the veteran of that squared circle. He's been with SICW before, him and Chief Atakula Kula. Remember oh, that? Oh, yes, sir. People, in, we, including the Swansea Firehouse, we had the beast brawl all over the place. He's a violent son of a gun, and he is taking it right to Tyler Bodine. Now, we've heard a lot about Tyler Bodine, but we have yet to see him in action. And now we see him with Big Texan. Yeah, I first, I first met Tyler Bodine down in New Breed Wrestling in Southern Missouri with our good friend Scotty Z at New Breed Wrestling. And he's been making a name all through the southern parts there down into Oklahoma. And, you know, when he had some dates available, he reached out. And I said, well, yeah, come on in here and let's see what you got to do. And the next thing I know, Texan's reaching out to him and saying, hey, I need some help. Yeah. Well, these are two raw bone brawlers, man. They seem to enjoy a fight. Uh-oh, what do we got here at ringside? Speaking of enjoying a fight, ladies and gentlemen, Mauler McGarvey and Sean Santel, the professionals have made their way to ringside to, I guess, just uh, keep an eye on the festivities here. Well, I think they're probably checking out the uh, tag team of both Shaw and the Beast and, and of course, the, the new Texan. Uh-oh, Bodine telling him, get out of here. This Abs is our match. Well, it's been the behavior and the shenanigans of the professionals that have caused the big Texan to call for backup in Tyler Bodine. Now it's the Texan giving Look, him a little point of the yeah, finger he, there. He says, you want to come watch? This could just as easily be. Whoa, here. look at this. Oh, big Texan picking up the almost 300-pound Richard Shaw, slamming him right in the center of the ring. Well, I got to say, these Texans are tagging in and out. I like that, keeping the fresh man in there. Yes, sir. Bodine, that Bodine. big right hand. Yeah, you can tell this is a guy that enjoys a fight. Big boot to the face of Richard Shaw. Followed up with a big leg drop. Look at that. You don't expect that from somebody the size of Tyler Bodine. I don't know if that boot got him quite where he wanted to, but that big leg sure got him. Absolutely. Look, look, looks like they got a double team maneuver. They're going for a double suplex. Up and over with Richard Shaw. Look at Shaw clutching that lower back. Oh, Texan. Oh, that cocky cover. I didn't think that was going to work anyway. Richard Shaw was a little too close to the ropes, and you just, you're just you not going to pin him like that. The big right forearms by the big Texan. As we've talked about before, Drew, since this new look of the Texan, his attitude has really stepped it up a notch, I'll tell you. Well, we've seen a lot of newcomers here recently, and the big Texan needed to reinvent himself. If you do not evolve and get better, you will get left in the dust here in SICW. The big Texan doing what he has to do to make sure he stays relevant and at the top of the food chain here. Oh, a reversal, and it's Shaw ends himself in there. And, oh, and big in comes splash. a big Texan. Holy cow. It's for sure the SICW ring is getting a workout today, Drew. Oh, you're darn right. Tyler Bodine in. Oop. Sends Shaw into the ropes. What's he got in mind? Big clothesline. You know, we've seen that big lariat from Texan. Maybe he's been teaching that to Tyler Bodine as well. Uh-oh, what's going oh, to be? Is he lining him up for he's it? He's lining it up. Oh! oh, my God. Richard Shaw, I'm surprised his head didn't just go flying off his body. That's going to do it. That huge step.
Stan Hansen like Lariat picking up the win once again. The big Texan with a dangerous, dangerous weapon in his arsenal. It is the team of Outlaw Country picking up the win in their debut match here on All-Star Wrestling. What an impressive showing from the big Texan and Tyler Bodine. And you just saw the professionals just walk off casually, so I wonder if they got what huh. they wanted to see. Yeah, I think uh, Texan and Tyler Bodine kind of welcomed them in for a fight, but at least tonight the professionals wanted nothing of it. Yep. Texan and Bodine victorious today. What a match and what a new team to hit the waves here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Herb, we're just fresh off of one of the best shows I've ever seen at the Belle Claire Fairgrounds. But as you know, there's no rest in the wrestling business. As soon as one show is over, we're moving right towards the next. And in this case, it is November the 13th in the East Carondelet Community Center. The main event has been signed as Bobby D will challenge for the SICW title against Attila Khan. We also have a big tag team match set up. This is a rematch, not a title rematch, but Ken Casa, Chris Hargis back together to take on Gary Jackson and Gil Rogers. The winner of this tag team match is likely set up for a tag team title rematch in the near future. That'll be the 13th of November here in East Carondelet. But that's not all. No, it's not all. And, you know, we've been saying for a long time, we, you think back several weeks, the Missouri Athletic Club, what a great night that was, sellout crowd, and everything has just been building since then. You just announced already the show in uh, November in East Grand Light, Illinois, but December the 1st, there's a special event that's going to take place in St. Louis, Missouri at the Viking Lounge uh, over off of 270 in Lindbergh at the Holiday Inn. And, you know, th there's been the myth out there, Drew, and you've been a part of it now for all these years that SICW doesn't want to work with nobody. They don't want to work with this. Well, we've proven that we've worked with New Breed Wrestling, Impact Pro Wrestling, USA Championship Wrestling. But come December the 1st, we're going to be working with the NWA, yes, sir, the I, National Wrestling Alliance. I was going to do a drum roll. So, and it's going to be a, a spectacular event. That night, we're going to be inducting the late, great Sam Muchnick, who was the NWA president for over 41 years. Not only that, not only that, we'll be inducting Larry Matasek. And, and also, the ring announcer that you kind of patented yourself after all these years, Mickey Gary Giola. Yes, sir. All three of them will be inducted into the St. Louis Sports Hall of Fame on that night. And that's just part of the information. The Gary Giola family will be there. The Muchnick family will be there. The Matasek family will be there. But a lot more action coming that way. So how you find out is follow SICW.org or tune in here each and every week for the latest information. Or follow Herb Simmons on Facebook. Follow SICW Wrestling Explosion on Facebook. I figure at the end of the year, we're going to start slowing down. You just keep adding more stuff. We just keep picking up steam. It's all because of the great fans. Absolutely. You know, we appreciate each and every one of you. And like I said, without no fans, there is no SICW. That's it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, earlier today, our cameras caught up with Rough Cut Rick Ruby. Let's all take a look at those words now. You know, I had a tough battle here with that two-man battle royal. At that spectacular show, me and you, Gary Jackson, we were there at the very end. Somehow fate didn't allow me to gain that Central States title. I felt I was cheated. Somehow I was cheated. I should have had you, Gary. I had you beat. I know I had you beat. I don't care what anybody else says. But Gary, you may be the champ now, but mark my words, it ain't over between you and I. And it's not over until I gain my quest in getting that Central States Heavyweight title, or I may go after any other title I see fit. But Gary, you're not out of the woods with me. You may be the freight train. You barely dodged the Lime Time Express. Next time you won't be so lucky. So Gary, you better be everywhere you walk. You better be turning your head. You better be sleeping with one eye open because I'm gonna be in your mind. And by the time that I see fit, I'm gonna make sure that Rough Cut Rick Ruby is a champion in SICW. 
Wrestling fans, I am here with your brand new SICW Tag Team Champions, Jason Breed and Flash Flanagan. Guys, we saw it at our last house show in East Carondelet. We saw it last week on All Star Wrestling. You two have the Travis Cook organization on the run. So first of all, congratulations on the title win. And what do you have in mind for Travis in the future? It's Flash. You see here, this is just the beginning. Travis Cook, I am coming at you one by one, and I'm going to get every single one of your members of the Travis Cook organization. Yeah! I, right here, the Tag Team Championships is just the start. Attila Khan, I'm coming for what is rightfully mine, and I'm going to take that heavyweight championship, whether you like it or whether you don't like it, but learn to love it. Jason, we talked last week, but once again, congratulations. I'll say that belt looks great on your shoulder, my man. And once again, last week, you guys ran off Attila Khan and Travis Cook. You're a man, you continue to be a man of your word. What do you say? Just like... Flash said right now, we're not done with you, Travis. Nope. Nope. We're not done with the TCO organization at all. We will destroy you guys, and we will get you out of SICW. There's nothing that's going to stop us. And when all the smoke is settled, we're going to let Travis and Flash finish this up. There it is. Ladies and gentlemen, these are your tag team champs. We're about to take a look at them in action. Flash, I'll give you the final word because Travis has been a thorn in your side, not just recently, but for years now. Well, like I said, Travis Cook, you made the biggest mistake of your life when you put your hands on my wife. And I promise you, I promise you, what you've done to her is nothing compared to what I'm going to do to you. Well, Travis... You're getting exactly what you deserve, my friend. We're going to head up to ringside right now as Flash Flanagan and Jason Breed will be in action right now. Ladies and gentlemen, the following non-title tag team match is set for one fall. Introducing first from Northern Scandinavia, weighing in at 30 and three quarters stone. This is Ragnar the Ruthless and Devlin Kane, known as Valhalla Rising. Their opponents, whoa, Flash ready to get going. Their opponents are your tag team champions at 478 pounds. First, from Indianapolis, Indiana, Flash Flanagan. His tag team partner is from St. Louis, Missouri, Jason Breed. Referee Nick Ridenow are checking your competitors for any sort of illegal objects. Looks like we're good to go. The bell has rung, and I don't know what to think of what we got here. We just saw the brand new tag team of the Big Texan and Tyler Bodine. Here's another new team, Valhalla Rising, and they've got their work cut out for them. They're taking on two men who are now the SICW Tag Team Champions. Well, Drew, and again, I'm going to ask you, is there any question why Everybody that's in the business wants to come to SICW. Look at the talent that's been on the last couple episodes we had here. They're coming from all over to come and be a part of SICW All-Star Wrestling. Absolutely right. Look at this. Jason Breed tagged the flash, flash off the top with the chop right to the shoulder blade. I'll say this. The team of Flash Flanagan and, and Jason Breed is not something I would have predicted. It's not something I expected here. But as we've seen, since they've been put together, they work together very well. And I think they've got the Travis Cook organization on the defensive. These guys have taken the fight to Travis Cook. And um, I, don't know, I can't wait till Flash gets his hold of Travis once again. Well, every time he gets an interview chance, I mean, he he's, he's obsessed with Travis Cook, and I can understand why. Absolutely. You heard him say the biggest mistake Cook did is putting his hands on his wife. And look at this, a double team, but whoa. Big clothesline to Ragnar the Ruthless. Oh, and look at this. 
inverted atomic drop, followed up with a big boot from Jason Breed. Look at this, great tag team uh, uh -oh. maneuvering Look at this. here. Flash up top, and he comes shoulder off that shoulder. Into a slam, that's the move that won those that won them the tag team titles and it's got them the victory today on All-Star Wrestling. And I guess what, that, that shows you right there why they have the Travis Cook organization on the run. You heard Flash Flanagan, come and get some Travis Cook. It is Jason Breed and Flash Flanagan, your SICW Tag Team Champions, victorious today over a pretty ruthless team of Valhalla Rising. He went. He says they want some, come get some. Flash Flanagan and Jason Breed are fired up. And today on All-Star Wrestling, your new tag champs are victorious. And you know, this this is Flash Flanning, and this isn't somebody that just woke up one day and said, I want to be a wrestler. He's been in OVW, he's been in WWF, WWE, and now he's been here at SICW, and he has listened to this crowd yeah. here. The, the, the they, studio, uh, TV studio, is just fired up with Flash Flanning. They love Flash Flanagan. And that match was a little bit of why. Absolutely dominant. And Travis Cook, afraid of that dominance. Jason Breed, Flash Flanagan, your tag champs with the win today on All-Star Wrestling. Wrestling fans, I am here with a newcomer to SICW. He is the connoisseur, Mr. Niles Plonquet. Niles, welcome to SICW. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. How's everybody doing here today at SICW, huh? Yeah. Doing great. Well, this is your first time here. For those who are unfamiliar with Niles Plonquet and what you bring to the ring, what can folks expect from you, sir? Well, where Niles Plonquet likes to go, I like to bring a little bit of class. And there's some already some classy people here. I see a lot of them sitting in the fan base here. But there's some people in the back that might need a little lesson in class and sophistication. So Niles Plonquet is here to bring a little bit of that class and sophistication, kind of bring a little culture here. Absolutely right. Now, I know you're a wine guy from Napa Valley. How does that uh, affect who you are as a person? Well, I like, I, I am a wino, that's fine. You know, uh, I have a, a good taste in things and that's why I'm here at SICW because I recognize good taste. I recognize the best things in life, and SICW is definitely one of the best things in life. Like again, the fans, the fans are some of the classiest people that I've met. This is some of the classiest wrestling that I've seen, and that's why Niles Plunke wants to be here. Well, we love it. We're glad you're here. We're glad you do bring some class to the place. And now we're just moments away from your in-ring debut here on All-Star Wrestling, and you've got superstar Steve Fender. And, of course, you got to have eyes in the back of your head. I don't know how familiar you are with Travis Cook, but you're going to be here in a few minutes. Oh, that's I'm uh, quite familiar with Travis Cook, and I'm quite familiar with superstar Steve Fender. Great, great competitor, but I'm definitely going to have my eyes on in the back of my head to watch that. So I've cut down on the wine for this match for sure. Well, I know we're all super excited to have you here, sir. Thank you. And uh, let's head up to ringside for your match. Yeah, good luck. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, our TV main event set for one fall. Introducing first, accompanied to the ring by Travis Cook. He is from Hollywood, California, weighing 229 pounds. Superstar Steve Fender. And his opponent, making his all-star wrestling debut, makes his way to us from Napa Valley, California, at 235 pounds, Niles Plonke. Ladies and gentlemen, the bell has rung. Our main event is underway. This should be an excellent one-on-one -on -one matchup. Superstar Steve Fender and Niles Plonquet, similar heights, similar weights. We'll see how their experience levels match up here. And you heard Niles, he's ready for Travis Cook. He says he's got eyes in the back of his head. Look at them 
exchange of arm drags. This is a main event in any arena, anywhere, and we have it right here on All Star Wrestling TV today. And boy, I'll tell you, they don't come much better than the superstar Steve Fender, trained by the late great Harley Race. Oh, look at this! You're going to see not only a wrestling exhibition here today. They're going to get rough and tough, I got a feeling. Absolutely, and we just saw a beautiful arm drag. That was a Jack Briscoe, Ricky Steamboat style arm drag we just saw from Niles Plonkay. Now, well, when you talk about the Ricky Steamboats and uh, the Jack Briscoes, we talk about the NWA and the announcement we just made. We are so excited to be tied up with that show on December the 1st. There's going to be a lot more announcements coming out about that, but fans, that's, that's news making information. The Absolutely. National Wrestling Alliance. Research what the NWA meant going all the way back to the heydays. The Wrestling at the Chase book by Ed Wheatley that just came out has that whole history documented in there. So you definitely want to get that copy of that uh, Wrestling at the Chase book, and you'll find out why SICW and the NWA is going to have that world title on the line on December the 1st. I love it. You think it can't get any bigger here at SICW, and you keep pulling rabbits out of your hat, sir. Well, Drew, I guess I would ask you, back when you first came on board with SICW with Larry Matasek and I, did you ever think that here this many years later that we'd be sitting here saying that we'd be involved in a NWA world title event? Well, ever since we kind of restarted about six, seven months ago, it's been a surreal dream, the things we've been doing. And our big show, December 1st, is just one more uh, one more feather under your cap there. This is really incredible. As much of a well-seasoned, well-versed grappler that superstar Steve Fender is, it seems like he's maneuvering Steve Fender move for move in this match so far. This is our first time seeing Plonkay on television. But at least up until now, he's been taking it right to a former champion. Well, and both of them, like I said, when you have the likes of Steve Fender trained by Harley Race, who goes in and Niles gets out of his way. Oh, look at that. And it's Fender finds himself almost oh, half no. in, half out, and laying on them ropes. Oh, big knee lift right to the midsection of Steve and Fender. Look at Travis Cook. Travis Cook is upset. I think his little TCO is having some bad happenings right about now. Well, it's been a bad few weeks. The war machine was unmasked. He was not ready for that. He was bragging that he had the tag team titles. He's lost them. He's got Superstar Steve in here, and I think Travis probably thought this was going to be pretty easy because this is the first time we've seen Niles. That's not the case. So I kind of like seeing Travis Cook on his heels, moving backwards. And here Niles Planque is coming outside and you see Travis getting on his pedaling bike there. And that's exactly what you have to do when you're, oh, and they were one step ahead of Niles. But that's what you had to do. He, you can't let Steve and Travis have a little bit of a huddle. Who knows what they were coming up with. Niles didn't give him one chance to do that, but that chicanery, these two are used, they've got so many tricks up their sleeve. Look at Steve, look at that look on Steve Fender's face. Just so smug and looking down on his opponent. Oh, kick right to the midsection, right to the ribs. Steve Fender, we forget because sometimes he likes to act a little cocky in there, but he's mean, he is dangerous, and it's only, you know, it's when he gets a little overconfident that we see that, and then this is what happens. Niles was starting to get the upper hand, but Steve, with that big forearm right to the face, getting things swung back in his favor. Let me ask you, uh, before I saw Niles Plon Plonke, you saw him and you recruited him onto your roster. What is, what is it about Niles Plonke that impresses you? He impresses me because this is a man that he can back up what he talks about. I saw him down in Tennessee in the Mississippi area when I was down there with, the, uh, like I said, my late great friend, Bert Prentice. From the first time I uh, saw him in action, he conducts himself as a professional. And when he gets in that ring, it's all business. And uh, you can see that right here today on TV that, you know, he, he means business. And he's got his hands full here today, but he's, he's given a good account of himself against the superstar Steve Fender. Absolutely right. And it's Wait only... 
Nope, just for the two. And see, that's what I was talking about with the cockiness of Steve Fender. If he would have properly covered Niles yeah, in that instance, leg. he might have picked up the win, but instead he was more interested in showing off for the camera. Well, and the one thing I know about Niles Planquet is you better not give him an inch because he'll take that mile. Look at that. Oh, that reverse big. elbow finds it, Mark. Absolutely. Followed up with a clothesline. Make it. Oh, back elbow. He's staying right on top of Steve Fender, and that's exactly what you got to do. Beautiful drop kick sends Fender crashing to the mat. Listen to the crowd. Niles has them on his side. He feels the energy. He's got the momentum swinging. Beautiful suplex with a cradle pin. I love that. That was sort of a fisherman suplex there. I think Niles, he feels like he's got this one under control. See what he's going for here. He's got Fender up on the shoulders. Fender fighting him off with elbows to the face. Looks like Fender trying to go for a backslide here. Can he get him over? Yes, he can. Oh, his feet, feet on the top ropes. He got him. Superstar Steve Fender with his feet on the ropes. Stay one step ahead of Niles Planquet. And look at, look at him and Travis. They sure are proud of themselves. I don't know if I would be proud of picking up a win that way, but I guess that's why I'm not Travis Cook or Steve right. Fender. Right. Now he's smiling. Look, Niles is frustrated. He knows he had Steve Fender right where he wanted him. And it was just that momentary slip up that allowed Travis Cook and Steve Fender to get the one up there. The referee, Denny Thomas, missed the feet on the ropes. We might not have liked how we got it done, but that's why they are who they are. It's Travis Cook helping Steve Fender, and they are victorious today over Niles Planquet on All-Star Wrestling. Ladies and gentlemen, what an episode. We continue to bring you barn burners week after week. This week, it was the debut of a brand new tag team, Outlaw Country. It was Big Texan and Tyler Bodine making handy work of Richard Shaw and the Wild Man Beast. Flash Flanagan, Jason Breed, showing everyone why they are the tag team champs as they defeated a brand new tag team of Valhalla Rising here on All-Star Wrestling. And folks, as we just saw, it was Travis Cook and Steve Fender one step ahead of Niles Plonke. It was a back and forth match, and it was Niles' first match here on All-Star Wrestling. He was this close to catching Steve Fender on multiple occasions. He was taking it to Steve, but as you saw, the Travis Cook organization, they know all the dirty tricks. It was Steve Fender with his feet on the ropes, picking up the pinfall. Steve Fender victorious today. Well, and I got to believe that you have to sense there's a little bit of concern in Travis Cook. And, and I think in the weeks to come, we're going to see a lot more of those frowns. And he wasn't happy against that Niles Plunkett match, and we haven't no, heard the last of Niles Plunkett. Well, absolutely not. Well, folks, we are one day closer to November the 13th in the East Carondelet Community Center. We hope to see you all there, and we hope to see you all next week right here on All-Star Wrestling. I'm Drew Ebenhaus for Herb Simmons. Good night, everybody. We'll see you next week. Wrestling fans, you just witnessed another amazing night of SICW All-Star Wrestling. Herb, this morning we heard Travis Cook putting out his challenge. We heard you and Drew talking about that, a little bit about that on the episode. But it's my understanding that you have the biggest part of that announcement right here, right now. Breaking news, as you said, uh, Dr. Drew and I talking briefly about the possibility of what Travis had been talking about. You know, he's always good about throwing out these challenges. Sometimes he lives up to them, uh, kind of like what he did uh, last night, you know. But again, he gets out there and he lets his mouth get him in more trouble. So the big announcement that we're going to talk about uh, right now is that on December the 1st, he said anytime, anyplace, anywhere, he wanted Attila to have another match and he threw out a challenge to the NWA world title somebody who I'm familiar with somebody who was trained by our great friend the late uh, Harley Race so I'm here tonight to break the news that on December the 1st yes that's December the 1st a Wednesday night in St. Louis Missouri 
the NWA title, the champion, Trevor Murdoch, will be defending that title against none other than the international bounty hunter, Attila Khan. Gonna did you feel a, the, did you feel the room shake be a little bit? Another great match. Uh, you know, I knew when I heard Travis announce that today, and then you and Dr. Drew were talking about it. I knew you could pull it off. Well, I got it, and I got to give uh, that a boys to uh, uh, William Corrigan, uh, the uh, NWA uh, president CEO. He got to see the uh, uh, challenge that. I sent it to him right away, and uh, him and I have been doing some negotiations in the past uh, several months now, and when he saw that, you know, he said, hey, you know, I agree with you, Herb, maybe, uh, maybe uh, when somebody asks for something, we just give it to him. So, I'm, you know, that match is going to take place at the Holiday Inn uh, at 270 and Watson Road in Sunset Hills, and uh, easy to get to, plenty of parking. Uh, right there next to the Viking Lounge uh, area that you're familiar with, real Absolutely. easy, real easy to get to. But it is going to be full that night when the NWA, the National Wrestling Alliance World Champion Trevor Murdoch, and takes on the International Bounty Hunter. And of course, you can bet Travis Cook will probably be there. Uh, seems like Attila doesn't leave home without him. Exactly. But there will be an all-star card take place that night, and also another announcement to go along with that because you've got the NWA, you've got SICW. What better way to help offset that but we're bringing in none other than one of the members of the former NWA years ago, Jerry Briscoe, the brother of the late great Jack Briscoe who held that NWA title. Jerry Briscoe will be in attendance with us and Cowboy Bob Orton Jr. will be there also that night. And that's just a few of the surprises coming up on that card. So, Herb, we've, we've been bringing the fans all the way up through October. Five great wrestling events this month. We know there's great wrestling events coming up in November when we return to the East Carondelet Community Center. And there's nothing more I can say here. You heard it tonight, folks, from the promoter himself, Wednesday, December 1st at the Holiday Inn, 270 and Watson Road, just outside of the city of Kirkwood. It is going to be a great night, a night to remember, and we're going to be talking about that here on this show for several weeks to come. So you need to keep joining us every Sunday night where you'll find the latest and greatest about what else is happening that night. Herb Simmons isn't done yet. There will be more surprises I'm sure he's going to be putting out about that night. One little thing I want to say, Travis, have a good night. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, more to come, and the only way you're going to find out is if you're here with us next Sunday night, 8 p.m. for the SICW Sunday Night Update and the next episode of All-Star Wrestling. Thanks for joining us.